Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today I want to share with you my top four third-party desert island plugins that I cannot live without. Now, first off, I would never have done this post unless folks had requested that I share some of my best recommendations for third-party plugins. The website is called WhyLogicProRules, and that's what I wanted to focus on. I make it a point to not mention other software from other companies because number one, Logic's awesome and it has everything we need to do great things. Number two, I feel like there's already so much shame when it comes to audio and recording. You don't have the right guitar, you don't have the right preamp, you don't have the right software, computer, speakers, room. There's just, the list is endless. And it's just not fair to anybody to have to contend with that all the time. However, like I said, I've had readers email me saying they, they would really love to hear my recommendations for third-party software. So let me tell you before we move on, I only buy software at this point in time. I only buy software if it does one thing. And that one stipulation is, does it make my life considerably easier, faster, more streamlined than I would be without this plugin or software? I've bought so many EQs, compressors, analog this, tape machine that. And at this point, I'm a little embarrassed to say that I've spent as much as I have because I don't see much of a point to most of it. There are certain plugins that I rely on every single session because it makes my life a hundred times faster and easier. And that's what I'm looking for. So that, I really love a minimalist setup. So that's what I focus on. Does it make my life easier and faster? If not, then I don't need another EQ or compressor. Last thing for you, I try very hard to keep all my videos around 10 minutes. With this one, I just couldn't accomplish that. So it's going to be a little longer. I apologize in advance. Let's dig into this. My four third-party Desert Island plugins that I could not live without. Number one, my favorite EQ of all time, the Plugin Mix Retro EQ. This is a company that receives no lip service from anyone anywhere, but they have this amazing bundle of plugins that all look like this. And it's like a hundred bucks for like 45 plugins and they sound great and they're always running deals too so you could pick this particular eq up for like 10 bucks most days i love the retro eq because it is very restricted there's not a lot of controls to fuss around with you just have to use your ears and get going there's no spectrum analyzer like the logic eq there's not this endless supply of bands that you can see that are being changed and cut and boost and whatever no i mean there's no display it's just you have a handful of bands just low mid and high you can adjust the frequency for each band or you can adjust the gain of each band so you can boost by 12 decibels or reduce by 12 decibels and then the curves or the cue for each band very restricted the low and the high you either have a shelf or you have a wide band and for the mid here you have either a wide band or a slightly narrower band. But this thing is so restricted, I love it. And it has a little bit of analog vibe to it as well. I love that as well. So let's start by EQing some drums here. I'm gonna solo these drums. Let's hear the drums without anything on them. And then I'm gonna do some EQing. I like the drums, they sound snappy, the snare has a nice snap to it, but they sound kind of flubby. So let's start by EQing this. I'm gonna to try to remove some of that flub in the mids. I'm gonna to try to lift a little high end out of it. You'll notice that I tend to EQ by boosting significantly, finding the frequency I want to boost or cut, and then reducing it to a more reasonable level. So let's just take a listen. Okay, so now the drum set is tightening up a little bit. I removed two decibels at 600 hertz to remove some of that boxy sound. 
I lifted just a decibel off of 5K and above to give a little more air, a little top end, but not much. Okay, we're in a pretty good spot. Let's move on to the kick and the snare with the Retro EQ. So let me open this up. And same thing, I'm gonna try to tighten up the kick. Let's see what I can accomplish. So you can hear right there, the kick tightens up. It gets less flubby. There's a little kind of like a papery smack at that 3K, but I like that. It gives it more definition. So I'm cool with that. It feels good. All right, let's move on to the snare. And I'll introduce Retro EQ. All right, let's try EQing the snare. Okay, now the snare, I, I don't 100% love where the snare is, but I've boosted around 200 hertz to give it a little more body. I boosted around 4K with just a wide band to try to get a little more stick attack or smack out of it. Let's before and after. The snare sort of sits up a little. I like that. Let's compare before and after. I'm gonna bypass these EQs and then let's hear it after with the EQ adjustments I've made. Pretty good. I would further fine tune from here probably with a channel EQ or adjust. But I think we're moving along. We're making quick decisions. We're just listening, making adjustments, moving on. I think there is a demonstrable improvement on this kit. Okay, number two of my favorite Desert Island plugins, Sound Toys Devil Lock Deluxe. This thing, man, I had no idea how much I was going to love this. I, when I bought the Sound Toys bundle, I had no intent of even paying attention to this thing because everybody talks about Decapitator, Echo Boy, all these very famous plugins now. Devil Lock, it's an audio destroyer. It levels signals. Who would want to use that? Well, I found that this thing is perfect for compressing. It makes light work of compressing. I don't have to think a lot about it. So, like I said, it destroys signals. They just will be decimated. I'm going to instantiate this on the drum bus. Let's take a listen to what is about to happen. I mean, that sounds awesome, but in most cases, that's not a very practical application. We don't want our drums to be pancakes so that they can't poke out in the mix. So let's walk through the controls. We have crush, which is compression. You can dial up the compression or down, depending. We have crunch for distortion, so you can add distortion, driving it up or down. Then we have the release. We don't have zero milliseconds to infinity to pick from. We have slow or fast, that's it. Darkness stands for like a low pass filter. So it starts at 20K and you can bring it down. So it kind of mutes and muddies whatever you put through it. And then we have the mix knob. This is where all the magic lies in the devil lock. Of course, it's destroying our track. That's a little heavy handed. So you mix in like parallel compression, just a touch to firm things up and give them stability. I have a video all about why I use parallel compression almost more than regular compression. And man, this, this does it for me. It's amazing. So you can click on the labels to see the values if you need it. I'm gonna drive this down to zero. Let's play around on the drum bus.
All right, right there, you can hear that the drum kit is now firmer. It has more stability. It's more assertive. I like that. Cool. Let's add it now to the kick and to the snare. So I'm going to play around on the kick here. I'm going to see my values here. Bring this all the way to zero on the mix knob. Let's play around. All right, the kick sort of exudes more power, assertiveness, stability. I dig it. All right, now on to the snare. Let's play around with the snare real quick. Same thing. I'm going to bring the mix knob to zero or as close to zero as I can. I want to see these values. Here we go. All right, I don't love the snare again. I would probably use a transient designer such as the enveloper that's included in Logic to tighten up the sustain on the snare. It's kind of like hanging a little too long, maybe for the kick too, but I'm digging on that. Let's hear before and after. I'm gonna bypass both plugins. We'll listen and then we'll introduce them. Not too shabby. I might dial back the mix knob a touch. I mean, it's already sitting at 2.5. You, you see, there's not very high values and you can make these drums sound mint real quick. And I use these two plugins on just about everything. I don't try to use a hundred different EQs and compressors. I try to stick with a couple between these two and the compressor and EQ included in Logic. I'm safe. I've got everything I need. I love it. Okay, let's move on here. Number three on my list of my favorite plugins of all time, third party that I can't live without. This is a plugin called Reference from a company called Mastering the Mix. This plugin is incredible. This makes light work of referencing. Guys, referencing is so important to your mix life, but where most people screw up when they reference is they don't use any reference at the front end of their mixing. They wait till they're like 90% through their mix and then they start to compare against a reference. Number one, you have no guiding light to get you to a balanced mix if you're not referencing from the beginning. Number two, it's just a demoralizing experience. You compare your mix against the reference at the end. It doesn't sound the same or it sounds worse and you don't know how to make heads or tails of it. It's just a bad way of going about it. Referencing through reference is fantastic because you can load from the finder here. You can go into your media your iTunes library, you can just drag and drop here. Let's grab an audio file, drag and drop right into the plugin, which is amazing. And then you can select between the different references. You can also loop different sections and solo them by control clicking. We'll use that one. We can level match our references to our current mix by clicking on the, this button here. So now everything is level matched. You can switch between your mix and the reference just clicking here. And then we have the Trinity display here, which I will show you first and then I'll walk you through it, which is just incredible. So let's listen to my mix. I'm gonna make sure that the drums aren't soloed. Okay, let's listen. Now let's compare against the reference. So clearly levels are all over the place in my mix. Clearly my mix is muddier, but it's not just a case of comparing, contrasting and going like, okay, I think this is what's going on. You have literally a display that tells you what's going on. This line has been floating in the bottom part of this band it, and 
This is the Trinity display. It tells you if you're heavy or light in a particular frequency band. So it's low, mid, or high. Apparently, I'm very light in the lows, probably a tiny bit heavy in the mids. So let's check it out. Okay, a tiny bit light in the highs as well. And then you can solo each band just by clicking on it. So let's solo the low end and compare against my reference. You even can see the stereo width of each band right here. The one highlighted is the mix that you're listening to. So in this case, it's my mix. And then these purple dots that are floating around let you know if you are under compressed as compared to your reference in certain frequency areas or over compressed. These purple dots are going out. So I believe that means that I don't have as much compression on the low end as my reference. This is amazing. You can quickly compare and contrast against various references. You can loop sections, solo them. They'll just hit loop on that particular section as you compare and you have a visual display and you can even solo the bands to tell you what's going on. And you can even make your own bands as well. I love this plugin. I couldn't imagine living without it. Okay, number four of my Desert Island plugins that I just can't live without. This is Sonarworks, a company that has created their own plugin called Reference, but this is for correcting the way your system interacts with your room or if you have headphones, they have a headphone version as well. So it'll adjust the EQ curve of your headphones. So you're listening to a more stable, uh, less colored mix. Now, I can't demonstrate this to you because it would not sound right on your particular system. But I could not imagine living without this. I mean, I've invested, you know, several thousands in treatment for my room for my speakers, for my sub, like I've invested a lot of money. I actually own Arc by IK Multimedia, which is a competitive uh, version of this plugin. And Sonarworks is just fantastic. As you can see, I've gone through a whole process of measuring my room with an included microphone. And based on the measurements of that microphone and the software captured, it created this curve based on how my speakers or monitors sound in my particular space and it is corrected, so to speak, the response. I'm telling you, it's night and day. It makes, it just makes the mix experience so much easier. And I love too that it has a safe headroom option where if it's enabled, it essentially auto compensates the gain of the output. So you're not getting blasted away. So if I turn this on and off, the volume difference is non existent. So there's a version for headphones as well. And essentially, they've measured all sorts of headphones from all sorts of manufacturers. They've made a calibration file is what they call it. And you when you purchase the software, you can download one of those calibration files for your headphones and import it right into your session. I put it right on my stereo output. Same thing with reference for mastering the mix, but I put reference before the Sonarworks curve. So I'm hearing my references through the same thing. You just have to make sure to turn these both off before you bounce your track out. But I'm telling you, reference from Mastering the Mix makes very light work of getting to a balanced mix quickly. And Sonarworks' reference helps me not listen to how my system sounds in my room. I'm listening to the mix and the sound as it should, or as close to as it should. So I hope that was helpful to you. That was a lot of fun for me. I love these plugins. If it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week, I'm creating new posts, new videos, and new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.